Welcome back to Cast of Blaga. In this episode, I am talking about House of Flying Daggers. This is a 2004 film directed by Zhang Yi. Okay, for this one, I actually took the time to try to learn how to pronounce the names. So, I actually wrote down the pronunciations. Zhang Yi Mao. That's the director. And it stars... Zhang Zi, Andy Lau, and Takashi Ken Ishiro. I probably still butchered him, even though I wrote down like how to sound them out. This is a movie I've been wanting to do since season one. I just it was really hard to find. This movie is very hard to find. I I finally found it on Blu-ray, but there's a story behind it. And it was like a bad quality. Apparently it was a bad rip. I don't know. I don't know. I saw a thing on it. And it's like, don't buy the Blu-ray. Because it's like, it was poorly transferred. And it's not a good copy. And I'm like, oh, okay. What I ended up having to do, rent it on YouTube. I tried to avoid that. But that's what I had to do. I was like really looking forward to this. This movie really influence the way I see non-English films. I mean, literally, the way I see non-English films. It came out in 2004, like I said, and my stepfather either bought it or rented it. I don't remember. I watched it like three times, so he had to have bought it. Anyway, I watched the dubbed version, because before this point, I only watched it dubbed. Because, of course. And, yeah. And after about two or three times watching it in dubbed, my sister said, I'm going to watch it with the uh, original Chinese. And I was like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. I'll read subtitles. And then as we're watching the movie with subtitles, you know, again, I'd seen the movie three times. I knew the movie. I knew the story. I'm watching it with subtitles, and I'm like, wait a second, this isn't... This isn't what happened. And that's when I realized that there's a difference between subtitles and dubbed. Because when they dub it, at least in most things that I've noticed, they don't do a literal translation. They do... They try to match the words with the actor's mouth. And that doesn't always work. And it changes the story. It changes what they're saying. It's not good. And ever since then, I prefer subtitles over dubbed when I can. And another more recent example is something I've noticed with Squid Game. I like that. It was a good show. I watched it with subtitles. And apparently most people watch it dubbed. And... I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't go into details, but I was discussing it with a coworker right after it came out, and they were like, wait, that's not what happened? I'm like, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what happened. They're like, no, she said this. And I'm like, no, she didn't. And and then I realized, like, I was like, wait, did you watch it dubbed? And she was like, yeah, I watched it dubbed. Why wouldn't? I was like, I watched it subtitled. And here's why that's not a good thing. Now, here's why it's good not to watch the dub version. And then she was like, ah. I kind of want to watch both versions because apparently both versions are good. Because it was most people that I know watched it dubbed and they still loved it. So imagine if you had to watch it subtitled. Anyway, talking about the movie itself. I actually watched this movie um, a little bit ago. Like, normally I watch a movie, do a little bit of research, record the episode. I watched this movie like two weeks ago. Uh, I was going (laughs) to do my usual thing. The only research I was going to do, because I knew this movie. I knew it really well. I was very familiar with this movie and the history behind it. Um, I was just going to look at the pronunciations. But I fell into a rabbit hole and like I've went into like a history lesson and like there was different elements of like the 
like the like it was like a cultural thing with like this it's a uh, wuxia I believe it's called the uh, wuxia wuxia I don't know I I forgot to write down the pronunciation of that one it's the genre of film that this is and it's a genre of Chinese fiction concerning the adventures of martial artists in ancient China. So that's what this is. And yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I wrote, also wrote down some of the things that there was a uh, Zhang Xi. Uh, Zi. I, I always thought her name was pronounced Zi Yi. Because it's Z I Y I, but apparently I watched. In order to get the pronunciation, I actually watched interviews, and they just said Zhang Z, and I was like, oh, they just it's just Z, okay, whatever. She's probably the most well-known person from the movie. She was in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She was in Hero, Memoirs of a Geisha, Rush Hour Two, and Avatar: The Way of Water. And a whole bunch of other movies. She's got a long list. But those are the most well-known movies that she's been in. And and then the Takashi Kinoshiro. He was also in Hero. He was also in Red Cliff 1 and 2. I saw the first one. It was really good. I didn't know there was a second one until I was doing research for this. And now I want to watch the second one. Uh, he was also in... Uh, he was the voice of Tarzan in Disney's Tarzan. At the animated film. But... He wasn't the English Tarzan that you would know. He was the, uh, let's see, Cantonese, Mandarin, and Japanese versions of Tarzan. So if you watch Disney's Tarzan in Cantonese, Mandarin, or Japanese, it was him. Okay, so I wrote down a bunch of one-word notes, and this was two weeks ago, and so I don't remember what all... So usually when I write these notes... I, I write like a couple words because like I do the I do the research and then I record it like less than an hour later so I know what it means. Nope, this is two weeks ago. I don't know what half of these notes mean, so I need to get better. I need a a, a better system for note taking. Uh oh yeah. So the reason it was two weeks uh because I started researching more and more and more and like it got to the point where I wasn't doing a movie podcast episode. I was just doing. Like a history lesson podcast. And if I had, if I, if I'd talked about everything that I learned the last couple of weeks, like doing research for this, it would be like a six hour episode. And it gets to a point where it's like, this isn't what the podcast is about. It was very interesting though. Like, I, I might do an episode of Digressor when that comes back because that's still on hiatus two years later. Um, when that eventually comes back, I might do an episode on it because it was very interesting. I, I actually, I had to like force myself to stop. I was like, wait, I gotta record this episode. <laughs> um, okay, so the theme was borrowed from a famous poem written by uh, the Han Dynasty poet Li Yanyan. Okay, I definitely mispronounced that, but it was. Okay, supposedly, it, okay, so it says based on this poem. Kind of like how I know Mulan was based on a poem. It was a legend. There's like multiple versions of Mulan. It was there was a poem. There's a legend, but like most famously, it was a poem. Well, House of Flying Daggers. Well, it says it was based on a poem, but uh, here's the poem. I wrote it down here. In the north, there is a beauty, peerless and independent. A glance from her will overthrow a city. Another glance will overthrow a nation. One would rather not know whether it will be a city or a nation that will be overthrown, as it would be difficult to behold such a beauty again. That was used for lyrics for a song. That There's a, a song that's sung in there twice, once at the beginning and once at the end. And I guess they took those words and made them the lyrics. So... I guess that's what they mean by that. It's based on a poem. It's not based on a poem because it's nothing like that. The story basically is... I don't want to spoil anything because I do want people to watch this movie. There are so many twists. I, I, 
the first time I, I watched this, I was like, it's like every five minutes, there's another twist, there's another twist, there's another twist. And because I remember thinking, this is unrealistic. It gets to the point where it's like, oh, this just this twist retcons the other twist. But like I was watching it this time and it's, every time I watch it, I always forget the twist. And so I'm always blown away. Like, oh, so when I'm watching it through, like, I'm never thinking from the context of, oh, this isn't as it is. But this time I went in remembering the twist and keeping them in mind. And yeah, I still checked out knowing what I knew. It didn't ruin the movie. Because, like, allegiances and stuff aren't where you think they are, and they keep changing, and then it's like, oh, that's not where you think, and then people aren't who they say they are, and I, I'm trying to say this without spoiling anything. That's why it's, I'm like, I'm all being vague. But basically, oh, that's, what, okay, three of the words I wrote down were the names of the character. May is... She's a uh, the blind daughter of the former leader of the House of Flying Daggers. And she is... Uh, wait, and there is... Jen, who is... Uh, let, me tell, let, me, let me say the premise of the story. She is the daughter of the former leader of the House of Flying Daggers, and then she is undercover or in disguise as basically a courtesan. And there is two soldiers or guards. I'm not entirely sure what they are. Uh, there is Jin and Leo, and they're trying to come up with a way to uncover the location of the Flying Daggers. So they hear a rumor that the blind daughter of the former leader of the House of Flying Daggers is in disguise as a courtesan at, at this um, palace place. And so Jin goes undercover as, as like an aristocrat or something. And he, he find you know, he goes and he's trying to, like, charm the girls there. And she comes out and he's like, what's your talent? And she goes, I'm a dancer. And he has her dance and she sings and there's a thing. And then Leo comes and has them arrested. And they play the echo game. It's this thing. It's a very visually stunning thing. It would have been really cool on Blu-ray if they didn't ruin it. Um... But, uh, yeah, so she's arrested, and and then Jen and Leo form a plan to have Jen dress up as, like, a hero person and pretend to free her so that she would lead him to the House of Flying Daggers. And... I'm not going to say anything else because I think after that, anything I say will be spoilers. It is very good, though. And like I said, I've seen it multiple times, and it's still... Even though I know the plot twist, I know the how it ends, I'm still like, oh, every time I see it, <laughs> I'm always surprised. Because like, I always forget the, the plot twists and then all the... everything that goes on. And so... Yeah. I also really love the music. I know I say that a lot with movies, but like I really love the music in this. I actually sometimes just randomly listen to the soundtrack. Yeah, this movie has some of the... It is, like I said, it's kind of a martial arts film. And so it does have some of those... Um, the exaggerated wire works... Like there's a scene near the beginning whenever Leo is fighting with May right before he arrests her and like he jumps backwards and he flies and then he like lands and then he 
flies and then like runs across these drums and it's like very unrealistic but that's the style that's that genre and it's it's amazing i think it was crouching tiger hidden dragon there's a that that famous shot where someone jumps and lands on their sword and just stands there yeah it's that kind of movie I mean, there's scenes of that kind of stuff. It's not the entire movie. Like, there are scenes like that. But, like, I think, like, the cinematography of the movie and, like, the the visuals and stuff are, like, really... It's a very visually stunning movie. And I wish they would fix the Blu-ray because I wanted it in Blu-ray because I, rem- I saw that on DVD when it first came out. And I thought it looked good. And now imagine those effects in Blu-ray. That would be amazing. But, uh, yeah. Unless I go on and on about sub versus dub, I think that's all I have here. And... 